All right. Um, let's look at some announcements just to start. The uh, first WMS assignment is due on Monday of next week. And that's essentially you either can pick one of the watersheds that I've given the information for or you pick a watershed that's interesting to you and you go through the process of finding the outlet, delineating the watershed, and summarizing its characteristics like the area, base, and slope, that sort of thing. So just kind of a repeat and practice of what we did in class last time. Um, the midterm that we're going to have a week from today on Wednesday the 30th, that's going to cover the, uh, the lectures that started after our first midterm. So class 17 was when we began talking about things like the uh, S-curve, unit hydrographs, kind of the fundamentals and basics of watershed modeling. And then it's also going to be a problem that requires you to apply WMS. And so you'll need to bring your laptops for the exam that day. Any schedule related questions or anything that's come up on your end? Okay, um, so you can see from the handout that uh, we're interested in sizing a culvert uh, for a watershed in Ona. You've got the latitude and longitude, you've got the street names, and so as I indicated before, what you may choose to do is pull up um, Google Maps just to help you find the location. And then once you know the intersection that you're trying to work with, then you can go through the process of starting the um, hydrologic modeling wizard, setting your projection, defining the project area, downloading the uh, DEM data from web services and all the rest. All right, so I'm gonna um, go through the same steps that you should but uh, I'm not going to narrate it because I, I don't want to interrupt you. I think many of you probably already have the workflow figured out.
One of the things that it says in the handout is the latitude and longitude of where the outlet should go. And I wanted to point out that here at the bottom of the screen, it'll tell you the latitude and longitude. And so uh, if you've already downloaded the elevation data, you'll see that you know, this is the watershed that we're talking about as two main branches. And we want to, uh, to see what is the culvert that's required to go under blue sulfur to accommodate this stream. So effectively, you're going to be putting the uh, watershed outlet not on this main stream, but just for this branch of the watershed. And you can use the latitude longitude to guide you. You want to be very careful about where you put the outlet. If you put the outlet on the main stream here, then it's going to try and include all of this river in the watershed. So you need to be a few pixels away from the main stream that you don't want to delineate. We just want this branch, this Lichens branch watershed. So you want to be a couple of pixels upstream of where that joins in to this, I guess it's Little Cabell Creek. Most people, though not everybody yet, has the watershed delineated. Your area should be in the vicinity of 265 acres, depending on where you clicked along that stream. Does anybody have any questions or anything they want me to show before I start to illustrate how we would set up a rational method model? One of the things I want to remind you is I've called WMS a pre-processor. As a preprocessor, what it does is it does the calculations you need to put data into a model. And a model is just a simulation of reality. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and simulate what would be the peak flow rate coming out of this watershed. And the rational method, which is very simple, remember is Q equals CIA. So as a preprocessor, what WMS has done for us is it's calculated the area. And we're going to go through the process of connecting to some rainfall data to define the intensity. But we're still going to have to make manual assumptions having to do with the runoff coefficient. As far as the rational method, WMS can't help us to pick a good rational method coefficient, although later on it'll do curve numbers in a really detailed and defensible way. We're still kind of hung out to dry a little bit when it comes to the C values. OK, so uh, let me illustrate what's mentioned on the handout step by step. We're going to go into the hydrologic modeling module. So rather than you, you could use, continue to use the, the wizard, but we're now out of the wizard. And so these buttons across the top are the different program modules. And this one that has like the yellow dots connected by black lines is the hydrologic modeling module. And so if you click on that, then this drop down box has a list of several different watershed models that it can prepare the data for. And we're going to select the rational method from that drop down box. So again, what we've done is we've changed which module we were in. We previously maybe were in the drainage module. And we're moving over to the hydrologic modeling module. 
And then with the drop down box, you select that you want to use the rational method. Now, when we're in this hydrologic modeling module, you'll notice that there's this black line and it's connected to a symbol that's behind our basin characteristics. You see where it says 1B? If you click on that, uh, you can drag it down out of the way so that it's not right on top of the text. Click and drag. Um, this is just kind of a symbolic representation of the model. And what it's symbolizing is that you have a basin that's connected to an outlet. So 1B is our basin, and what it's calling 3C is the outlet to that basin. It's basically where all of the flow concentrates to, and it's connected by a stream. If you double click on 1B, then it's going to bring up this rational method calculator. And you'll notice that some of the characteristics are already filled in for us, like, for example, the area. So um, let's see. In the handout, what I suggest is once we have this rational method window, that we set the runoff coefficient to 0 0.6. And so that's here under the basin name. So 1B and then runoff coefficient 0 .0, oh, I'm sorry, 0 0.60. So we've defined the coefficient. Um, compute time of concentration using basin data. So down here, compute TC basin data. Click on the compute and it brings up another calculator tool that is going to give us a variety of models. These are just formulas that try to estimate what's the time of concentration for this watershed. And so what I say is let's use the lag time. So there's time of concentration and lag time. Let's switch from time of concentration to lag time and use this SCS method. So we're going to use the SCS method to calculate the lag time and then the lag time can define the time of concentration if you remember back to when we were discussing unit hydrographs. So we're in this basin time computation tool. And then it's already filled in some of the data that it's know, it knows. Like it knows the watershed length. So it's pre-processed that for us. The watershed slope, 36%. Things are steep here in West Virginia. But what it doesn't know yet is curve number. It hasn't gone to download the soil type and land use data for curve number. But what I'm telling you is that a typical curve number in this region is 75. So we can just type that in manually here in this variable value window. You can type in 75. And so then from that, it's going to calculate 25.2 minutes for the time of concentration. So here's Q equals CIA. This is the rational method. Why did I just bother going through and calculating the time of concentration? That's not one of the variables in Q equals CIA. So why do we care about the time of concentration? We use it for the storm intensity. Very good. Because remember, we're going to have an IDF table that has intensity and duration and then it's got these curves of 25-year storm, uh, sorry, two-year storm, five-year storm, 10-year storm, and so on. So we're going to say the time of concentration will be our storm duration that governs. And then we're going to reflect that off of the IDF curve to find the intensity. So just to reestablish kind of the thinking here, that's why we need to know the time of concentration. So now that we've done that, we are going to compute the IDF curve. So click on this button for compute and Hydro 35 data. What it's going to do is effectively connect to, remember, the precipitation data frequency server. We've been to that website before. It can connect to that website as well. And so it's going to take our outlet location as the location of interest and uh, it's going to get that data for us. Um, so click on Get Online Data, that button, and boom. It, it fills in the intensity, duration, frequency curve that we're going to use. And so it knows the time of concentration. And um, 
So let's compute intensity, clicking on this compute intensity button. Oh, sorry, we gotta pick which year we want. Uh, 10 year storm. So click on the row for the 10 year storm. And it's computing that the intensity that applies here is 3.255 inches per hour. So think about what we've used WMS to do. We've used it to delineate the watershed. So it gave us a really precise estimation of the area. And then we used it to calculate the time of concentration, which we need to define the intensity. And then it went and got the location-specific rainfall data so that we can say, all right, 10-year storm, the intensity is going to be, in this case, 3.255. Okay, so I'm going to click Done. And it's taken that intensity into this rational method calculator. And so now it's, you can see flow rate Q, it's computing the flow rate. So it says 521 CFS if the C value is 0 0.6. And we can verify that. 0 0.6, intensity is 3.255, no, 2, yeah, 255 inches per hour. And then our area was 265 acres. Okay, so let's just make sure that this uh, there's no funny business happening in the background there. It's always good to do a reasonableness check, verify what you know. So 0 0.6, 3.255, and 265 acres, 520 CFS. All right. So that's the rational method, pretty simple, but remember the weakness of the rational method is number one, it's best suited for watersheds that's no longer than, no bigger than 80 acres. So we're kind of outside of that range that it would be appropriate in the first place. But even for watersheds 80 acres and smaller, um, it tends to overestimate. So we just know that, you know, we can still use the rational method but what we know is that the 10-year storm is probably going to be less than 521 CFS. That maybe is an upper limit. But it's good to look at a problem from a lot of different directions. You know, like if you know the rational method is predicting 520 CFS, and maybe we use the national stream flow statistics as well, and we get a flow rate from that, and then maybe we also, a little more sophisticated, get our own soil type and land use data, run a heck one model and it says a different flow rate and so we kind of triangulate and we know the true answer is probably somewhere within the bounds of those three estimates. Any questions so far about using the uh, rational method? Was everybody, was anybody else able to get this 520 CFS? I see a couple of nodding heads. All right. Now, one of the things we can do to increase our precision is to subdivide the watershed into smaller pieces. So, for example, we shouldn't use the rational method for more than 80 acres. And we've got 265. What if we broke this watershed up into three pieces, each of which was smaller than 80 acres? Then maybe we'd be getting a little bit closer to an accurate estimate. So let me illustrate what we could do to, uh, to put in a few more outlets. I'm going to bring back up the hydrologic modeling wizard. And of course, at this point, we're kind of familiar with how we can skip back and forth through the workflow. What I'm going to go to is the choose outlet location. And I've already got this outlet created, and it'll stay there. But I'm going to add two more. I'm going to add an outlet where this west branch comes in and an outlet where this east branch comes in. So I'm going to click Create Outlet Point. I've got to be really careful. You only get one shot at this. You put it in the wrong spot, <laughs> start over. Okay, so I'm on the flow accumulation cell. I'm not on the main branch. I'm definitely off the main branch, so I'm going to click here. All right, so I've dropped one, and then I'm going to get another one for this west branch. All right, now, I'll go into next and delineate watershed. So it's got three outlets this time. Delineate watershed. It's just giving me the warning. It's going to delete the previous single basin and replace it with whatever it comes up with 
on the basis of those new outlets that I created. And fingers crossed, what it gives me is, yeah, gives me three different basins. It's maybe easier to see this if I go back over here into the drainage module. So do you see I've got one basin that's about 100 acres, another one that's about 90 and 66. So I'm still a little bit over that upper limit of 80 acres, but it's probably less drastic at this point. And what it does is it gives us the opportunity to use different C values for each of the locations. Because it could be the case, for example, that my upper left watershed, this one, um, what if it is really undeveloped land, sandy soil, just the sort of things that gives you a lower C value? What if I wanted to uh, assign one C value here, but then there was more urbanization in this lower basin, more houses, more roof area, more pavement, and so a higher C value there. So what I'm going to do is go back into this hydrologic modeling module. I'm in the rational method and double click on one of these icons and it'll bring up, oh, uh, I think I maybe just dropped another basin. I want to use select basin and double click on that and it brings up the rational method um, calculator. Right now it's just showing me the selected, but I could have it show me all the basins. And so it's got all the basins. You can tell from the areas which is which. Another way, by the way, to get that open rather than double clicking is I think depending on which model you are in, it changes this menu across the top. So if I'm in rational, not so sure I want to read simulation. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Just select basin, double click, and it'll bring up that uh, this tool with all. Okay, so in the handout, what I suggest is let's use different C values, calculate individual times of concentration, and then find out what's the new um, combined flow rate after all three of them together. Okay, so upper left is the one that's 100 acres and that's the one that I suggest we have a C value of 0.4. The lower basin is the smaller that has the 66 acres and that's the one that I suggest we have a 0.7 C value and then the upper right has a C value of 0 0.55. All right, now we need to compute the times of concentration and we'll do that in the same way that we did before using the basin data. Change it to lag time, SCS method and then we have to manually put in the C values. And so what the one I'm doing right now is the upper right. And that's the curve number of 75. I think we can even rename these basins. That might be nice if I did. Easier to keep things straight. So upper right. upper left and lower. Yeah. So I was back into computing the uh, time of concentration. Lag time, SCS method and the uh, upper right has a curve number 75 and it's computed the time of concentration. We'll do that for all three of them.
once you've got the time of concentration defined, then you can do the IDF curve, and we're going to use the same 10-year storm. And it has the online data already, but we need to compute the intensity. Since the times of concentration are lower, then the intensities will be higher. can circulate around if anybody has questions. So the thing that you should be able to do by now, and, and you know, familiarity comes from practice. And you've got an exam next week where this is the sort of thing you're going to have to do. So just doing it only in class and for the homework may not be enough for you to become proficient and polished to the extent that you'd like for the exam. So what I'm suggesting is try this a few more times, even though it's not necessarily a homework assignment. You know, you do have a homework assignment, but it's okay to, uh, to go through this process just over and over until you're a honed, sharp-edged tool and can delineate a watershed really quickly, set up the rational method model and all that. If you have questions, this would be great. Call me on Teams and I can watch you do stuff on your computer as you work through it. So feel free to let me know if you need help. That's all for today. I'll see you on Friday.